All right, so I filled the filter with fuel. Um, the one that's got a plug on the top of it, which I could take out and fill it with fuel. Um, the other one didn't, so I just disconnected the hose and poured fuel down, down the fuel line. And then I went to the, to the head and I stuck my little vacuum pump in the, uh, the return for the fuel there, took the line off and sucked the fuel through. So it should be primed and ready to start. Go ahead and try it. So we got the bumper removed, making draining the cooling system right now, and then uh, get the belt off, getting ready to do, you know, undo the electrical connections and main muffler disconnection is done there. So we're getting there. So it's really getting close now. All the air lines are disconnected back here, all the electrical connections, starter, fuel lines. Uh, you know, all the senders, oil pressure sender, um, alternator, all that stuff is disconnected. Power steering lines. The shift linkages are disconnected. Um, I still got a couple airlines on the air compressor to get to. And I have the, the drive shaft to drop still. And the clutch linkage is still on there, but the shift linkages are all off. Um, it's it's really close. A couple things about an MC5, if you didn't know. One is that engine doesn't sit perfectly straight. It's in at just a slight angle. Um, and I also found out that if you ever want to change the air compressor on this, you have to pull the engine out to change the air compressor. You have to slide the engine back. So even bigger pain in the ass. So just one of those one of those things. Yeah, the, the exhaust is disconnected there. I think it's going to clear. I might have to drop the muffler down just a little bit. But I'll see once I start moving it what happens. So I think I think it'll be okay. But yep, you can see everything is disconnected. And then we'll be able to slide that, slide that back a good four feet probably, and that should give me enough room. Maybe three and a half feet. We'll see. Lift that over that little lip with the pry bar here, and then uh, we have a come along tied to the cradle, which is either going to pull the engine or pull out a giant bush. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> position this I've already bent it once okay it's moving <laughs> okay, we'll take a second. <laughs> so I'm attempting something different here. I'm trying to keep the transmission in place and just pull the engine off. And I've already got the engine started to move here. And as you can see, I have the bottom of the transmission supported. 
a large board across it with two bottle jacks on each side so I can raise it up, you know, tip it left or right. And then uh, the back of it, I've got some wood shims blocked up under it so it can't, there's a steel mem member that runs right underneath of it. So it can't fall backwards or forwards. Uh, and if, when the weight of the engine comes in or off of the cradle, if we have to move it up or down, we can do that. Um, so we'll see if this will work. I figured this would be the easiest way to just get the engine out so at least three feet here on the cradle and then uh, get the clutch out. Okay. So we've got these big timbers set up here at the same height as that. Tom, you want to go ahead and give it a couple cranks here and let's see what happens. Record my duck here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is moving, but it's really tight. Let me get a pry bar in there and let me make sure everything is disconnected too. Make sure we're not hung up on anything. Uh, if I have to kind of lift it up a little bit with a pry bar back and forth, I'll do that too. <laughs> Pull? Yep. There you go. Look at that shit. I'm okay. amazed. Good now, job. We have a slight problem. Our railroad tie is just a hair too tall, right? Uh, well, now it, no, it's not. It like was. Oh. When you were standing on it, it was. Oh, I was bringing that one up in the air. Yeah, so what was flexing? How did that happen? Yeah. Just the ground is okay. uneven on the... This is, it looks right to me, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me go check. Make sure but this not. one's too low, right? Yeah, but it'll be okay. It was in there straight, though? And now it's... Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's on the rails. It's not going to go. Connected. Which cable's gonna break? It's gonna break? This right here? Well, probably one of those. Keep recording, okay? Mm -hmm. I just got a pry bar in the nuts. <laughs> it was caught up against me and it came right back. Ready? Mm -hmm. Get 
Yep. All right, so I got the transmission off here, and the first thing that I notice is the height of these fingers. They're supposed to be an inch and five sixteenths on this bus away from this straight edge here. And they're like a quarter of an inch away. They're all like that. The, these are totally set wrong. Um, and then when I peek in the side over here, I can see a shitload of meat on that clutch disc in there. You see that next to the intermediate? This is a twin disc clutch. So that's the inside outside surface of the outermost clutch. Um, like, and these are barely even on those little, now he had somebody come and look at it and they put a wrench up in there and we're doing something, but these don't look like they've been turned at all. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm this far into it. I need to just take it off and, and inspect it, but it, it might not, it might just meet adjustments in here to get this thing going again. And then, uh. I mean, we'll see, but those are supposed to be an inch and five sixteenths below the top edge, and they're a quarter of an inch. So that is clearly not right. That is... Been slipping. There's a lot of meat on it though. But look at all that shit that came out of there. I'm using my shirt as a mesothelioma mask. <laughs> been slipping and I'm guessing it was just slipping so much because the adjustment was so bad there's a ton of meat on that still but we've got a new one we need to just put the new one on I guess um, yep I'm just guessing the adjustment is what let it slip like that and then it obviously you, you don't have smell of vision but it smells like burned clutch in here and all those little asbestos particles. <laughs> Probably a bad adjustment, my guess is what caused it to fail. And then it just failed so badly that it's it's ruined. If it would have got caught early enough, I might have been able to reuse it. 